Rise and shine, students! Another day, another lesson to learn. We are your teachers for this morning. I am Jolly V. Parnada, together with Miss Noveline Palange. Today, we will be discussing the lesson 2, the Code of Ethics for Professional Teachers, Relationship with the Secondary and Tertiary Stakeholders, the Teacher and the Parents. Our main topic for this morning will be focused on the relationship with the teacher and the parents. As we move further with our discussion, we will learn how important their cooperation with each other in shaping the student's future. We will be discussing also their rules in students' lives. Now, let's talk about the teacher and the parents. Both parents and teachers play a pivotal role in educating a child. Parents are a child-first teacher. They teach essential life and academic skills while providing love and support that help students healthy develop. So the teacher and the parents have a great impact on the student's life. When the students receive a proper guidance from their environment, from home and school, they will feel more motivated to learn. It would also help improve students' behavior in the classroom. If the teachers and parents communicate well, this will help them get more motivated and their self-esteem and attitude in class will also improve. So now, let's dive into our next topic, which is the parents' role in the students' lives. We have list six rules here. Number one, monitor your child's progress in school. Of course, it is the parent's responsibility to always monitor their child because parental involvement in education can inspire students and empower the child to develop good learning habits. Lastly, it would also encourage students to attend class regularly because they are being monitored by their parents. Number two. Attend Parents Teachers Conference. Parents Teachers Conference is a great way to help students succeed at school. Parents Teachers Conference would also be a great opportunity to share academic progress and growth about the students. So the parents will be informed about their child's strengths, needs, behaviors, and learning styles. Number three. One-on-one -on -one talks. Communication between parents and children is very important. It is the responsibility of the parents to provide guidance and advice. During these one-on-one -on -one sessions, problems and corresponding solutions can be discussed. All children need some time for a heart-to-heart -heart talk with their parents. Number four, participate in school activities. School activities are great opportunities to bring together students and parents. Students are strongly encouraged to participate in school functions, contests, and sports. Children naturally want to exhibit their talents and skills for everyone to see, especially their parents. It is also an excellent opportunity to get a feel of the school environment and how students interact with each other. Number five, be a role model for learning. Parents serve as the first teachers of their kids during the early years. The responsibility of teaching doesn't end when a child starts going to school. Often, children will need help in their assignments in math, science, and social studies. It is the parents' job to show how exciting and useful learning can be. Through proper guidance, Parents can help their kids manage their time and strike a balance between recreation like watching TV, playing games, surfing the net, and school. Number six, connect what your child's learn to everyday life. Many of the things that a kids learn in school can be associated with everyday life. For example, parents can talk to their child about the units of measurement when cooking. In the field of science, parents can discuss celestial bodies like sun, moon, and stars, and the weather outside. If the child shows interest in gadgets and things, parents can explain how the computer, refrigerator, and other appliances work. Parents can also discuss safety inside and outside the home, what to do during a storm, fire, or earthquake. If parents make this a part of the child's everyday experience to fuel their curiosity and desire to learn. Next, we have the teacher's role in shaping students' future. 
Number one, encourage students to be involved in their own learning and help them take ownership of their education. Meaning to say, when a students are in charge of their own learning, they feel a sense of belonging the classroom becomes a space defined by them. So, the teacher can design activities that foster learner independence. It is very essential because they invite students to engage more thoughtfully with the content and that engagement should include students talking about their works. Number two. Guide students to be active in their performance. So, if the teachers have this encouraging active learning, it will help the students to achieve higher grades based on their enhanced skills and understanding. Because active learning encourages students to become more involved in their own education, which better prepares them for higher education and for the workplace. Number three, should create an environment where students feel free to ask questions, raise concerns, and participate in the learning process. Teachers should pay attention to whatever the students will say or whenever they will try to share their opinion. The teachers should make a classroom that can make them feel heard and appreciated. Number four, shaping students' child future making him her a better human being. A teacher imparts knowledge, good values, tradition, modern day challenges, and ways to resolve them. An excellent teacher is beneficial to the students, and also it may encourage students and help them boost their moral and guide them to be more valuable in life. Now, let's move on to the following qualities that a teacher should possess for him her become an effective educator. First is, should be impartial, meaning to say, a teacher must treat all his or her students equally, while I favoritize him. Number two, must be an embodiment of patience. Nga nung need mang yud og taas nga pasensya ang maistra or maistro. Because the pace and speed of learners are different from one student to other. It is very important to understand students, their skills, talent, memory, and treat them individually to guide them towards the best. Kung walay kay pasensya or mubo ra kaayog pasensya o pailob ang usa ka maistra, di siya mahimong effective na educator since the capacity of the students in terms of learning are not the same. Number three, must have problem-solving skills. Problem-solving is fundamental to education. And since problems are part of our lives, a teacher who has these qualities will make it easy for him, her, to help students overcome their challenges. Now, let's talk about how does a positive parent-teacher relationship impact students. We have three explanations here. Explanation number one is, Students are more invested in classroom goals. Explanation number two, problem solving happens efficiently. Explanation number three, greater wins. So aside from these three explanations, several studies also have proven that collaboration between parents and teachers improves children's academic achievement work habits, social skills, and emotional well-being. So, if the teacher and the parents are having a good relationship towards each other, the students are most likely to be successful. Code of Ethics for Professional Teachers Article 9. The Teachers and Parents Section 1. Every teacher shall establish and maintain cordial relations with parents and shall conduct himself to merit their confidence and respect. So as a teacher or future teacher, you need to develop, need to establish a good interpersonal skill in communicating with the learner's parents. Because aside from the teacher, the parents are the one who was the most concerned of their child. We need to build a strong and good relationship with the learner's parents so that they can win our trust. Section 2. Every teacher shall inform parents through proper authorities 
of the progress and deficiencies of the learner under him, exercising utmost candor and tact in pointing out learner's deficiencies and in seeking parents' cooperation for the proper guidance and improvement of the learners. So, all of us know that both parents are and teachers plays a vital role in educating a child. It's really important that the teacher have contact to the parents to report the, impro the improvement of the children and what need to do to improve more. So this communication is all about the proper guidance and help for learner improvement. Section 3. A teacher shall hear parents' complaints with sympathy and understanding and shall discourage and fair criticism. So, when the parents addressing her complaints, we must listen them carefully and understand their complaints with sympathy. And after hearing their all complaints, we must talk to them with respect so that everything is under control. What can teachers do to build relationships with parents? <clears throat> First is use a consistent communication platform. Whether you send home a daily student journal with highlights and challenges, a weekly progress report, or a monthly classroom newsletter. Create system to keep communication with parents consistent. Regularly, sharing announcement and reports on student progress keeps parents informed and engaged with what's happening in the classroom. Communication is most effective when it goes both ways. Second is, have fair, clear, and consistent classroom systems. Students and parents should know what is expected in every classroom. These expectations and practices should be communicated at the beginning of the year and should be followed with fidelity. Committing to system and being consistent with expectation choose parents and students a teacher can be trusted. Third is accept and reflect on parents' feedback. Parents know and love their children. Their insight about their child's need is the most valuable data a teacher can have. Have parents complete surveys throughout the year. At the beginning of the year, send home a survey that asks parents to highlight their students' strengths and their hopes for the year. Then, halfway through the year, as parents to give feedback on classroom practices to check in on progress. Teachers should reflect on feedback from parents. It can be hard to accept and implement the ideas of multiple people. However, if teachers are able to detach emotions, this can be practiced altering feedback that positively impacts students' results. And fourth is show empathy to parents. Teachers should be patient with parents and seek to understand. Asking parents the best way and time to communicate can ensure that teachers effectively get in touch with parents. And being sure to share student success as much as student challenges will help parents maintain momentum as they work to provide for all their child's many needs include parents we need to include parents as an audience when students are presenting their work all of these ways give parents a role in the classroom their involvement is invaluable and can positively impact the child's school experience what can parents do to build relationship with teachers? First is read and respond to school correspondence. 
teachers often send letters to parents to keep them informed. So, reviewing and responding to teachers' communication can ensure that parents stay updated on classroom goals and student progress, especially in between report card cycles. Second is attend school meetings when possible. Many schools establish special events that help parents and teachers talk about classroom procedure and topics. Provide student academic history. It can help teachers learn more about what strategies have been attempted and were successful for students. Student history may help teachers work more effectively towards meeting student needs because they have more context about the student academics and behavior. And last is show empathy to teachers. Being teacher is stressful and overwhelming. So a great way to support a teacher is to be patient, understanding, and offer help.